pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Sylvain Corizier. Sylvain was born in Paris, did his studies in the French system. Uh, in 2001, he was uh, awarded the uh, PhD uh, by the University of Paris Sud at Orsay under the supervision of uh, Jean Christophe Yocos. Uh, I happened to be in the committee for the thesis. And uh, short afterwards, uh, Etienne was also in the committee, I remember. Uh, short afterwards, Silva was hired by the CNRS, currently is a director of recherche at the CNRS. He's uh, one of the best experts in smooth dynamics, particularly partial hypoglycity and the study of uh, homoclinic and heteroclinic phenomena. And today he's going to speak on dynamics of C1 diffeomorphisms, <coughs> global description, and prospects for classification. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? So uh, I will uh, talk about uh, dynamics from the C1 topology <coughs> viewpoint. So this has some story now. It started with uh, maybe a male, uh, a pew shoe. Uh, Manier, and uh, so uh, recently there were uh, more uh, results, uh, examples, which uh, so a lot to formulate new questions, and so uh, a more precise picture about this kind of dynamics uh, appear now, and that's what I like to talk, talk about. Now. So. Uh, let me first start to say what we mean by uh, global dynamics, uh, global uh, qualitative <coughs> description of the dy dynamics. So we are on a compact connected manifold, and we study its uh, diffeomorphism. And we uh, first uh, wonder if we can split the, the dynamics, if we fix a uh, diffeomorphism. Uh, we want to split the phase space, so here the manifold, into uh, elementary pieces and try to understand uh, for each piece what are the points that are attracted. So this is in a phase space, but as uh, Etienne mentioned uh, some day ago, we also want to understand uh, the space of system. So uh, to identify different kinds of dynamics in order to distinguish between the different systems and uh, try to see how, how they are organized in the whole space. Uh, in particular, we want to understand how the dynamics uh, changes when uh, the system is modified. There is a class of system which is uh, known, uh, well known for a long time, the class of hyperbolic system. Uh, so they are defined this way we first define the notion of hyperbolic set, it's an invariant compact set whose tangent bundle has an invariant decomposition in two parts. The first bundle is uniformly contracted, the second one uniformly contracted in the past. Mm, so here are the example of the Flickin attractor, here are the map defining the horseshoe. And then a hyperbolic diffeomorphism is a, a, a diffeomorphism whose dynamics is supported by some hyperbolic sets. More precisely, there exists a, a decomposition of the manifold, filtration in two levels. The orbits, the set of points whose orbits remain in a level, uh, is a hyperbolic set. And the other orbits are only allowed to descend the level. These orbits, the second kind of orbit, uh, are highly uh, wandering, and so uh, we won't uh, study them anymore. So this map have uh, this dynamics have good property. Uh, so we can split the dynamics, uh, but there is a minimal way to split it, and the number of pieces is finite. We call this a spectral decomposition. Then for each piece. The set of points which converge to this piece is a, a lamination, the, what we call the stable lamination, by stable leaves, and symmetrically in the time we have the unstable lamination, 
by unstable leaves. And the dynamics are stable under perturbation. In particular, uh, they, they, they define an open set in the space of, uh, of system. Now let me give uh, two ways to, to find non-hyperbolic systems. So the first way is by considering two periodic points that are hyperbolic, but uh, they are linked by, uh, by some orbits, so the, the stable and unstable uh, manifold intersect. <coughs> and for that reason, each time you consider filtration, these two periodic orbits have to, to, to stay at the same level of the filtration. So now, if these two periodic orbits are hyperbolic and with different stable dimensions, they can't exist a global uh, stable uh, hyperbolic structure on this level of the filtration because of the different uh, stable dimensions. So this, this configuration is called a heterodimensional cycle. And the second, uh, the second uh, configuration is given by a single hyperbolic uh, periodic orbit whose stable and stable manifold have a non-transverse intersection. Again, the orbit of this intersection should uh, stay in the level of the filtration which contain the periodic point. And again, there can't exist a hyperbolic decomposition on this, uh, on this level because at this point, uh, the stable uh, direction of the decomposition should coincide with the tangent space of the stable manifold and the unstable with the unstable uh, manifold, and so here uh, it's, they are not transverse. So you could say that these two examples are very particular because uh, here we have a non-transverse configuration that can be destroyed by a small perturbation, but there is a way to make them more robust. So here we want to link two manifold with small dimension, and this can be done by adding a uh, large hyperbolic set, so we make them uh, these two manifold to intersect a larger hyperbolic set so that this intersection cannot be destroyed uh, for the diffeomorphism clause. In the second case, we replace the periodic point by a larger hyperbolic set so that the stable and stable lamination have tangencies and uh, many tangencies so that we, we cannot destroy all these tangencies at the same time by diffeomorphism clause. So we get uh, robust, uh, robust non-hyperbolic uh, dynamics. So how to, what, what do we want to do now? Uh, we don't expect to describe all, uh, all the system. Uh, some uh, seems too pathological to de degenerate, but we want to describe at least a large subset of them. Uh, large mean, so at least uh, dense, but sometimes we could do better, so if we have a notion of generosity, we may wonder if we can uh, describe a generic set. Here, what we would like to do is to describe the system in any region of the space of diffeomorphism, so we need a notion of generosity which is uh, quite flexible, and one which is fine for us is a pair generosity, so the residual set or the dense general sets. But what's important is a uh, so the word dense, and uh, so this means that starting from any system, one needs to find a system close whose dynamics is controlled. So we need to understand perturbation of dynamics, which is some, something which is uh, which could be very delicate. Let me give an example. If we have an orbit which accumulates itself, we wonder if it's possible to find a periodic orbit by a small perturbation, so perturbing at some point of the orbit this way, but to perturb we have to modify the diffeomorphism on some region and we don't want that the modification intersect the orbit at another place because we, we could break the, the periodic orbit. So we have to compare the size of the, of the, the distance where we move the, the point to close the orbit with the support of the perturbation and uh, so this becomes much more difficult if we perturb in high topology. So a topology where this is possible is a C1 topology as Pew has, has shown some time ago. 
Okay. Uh, we don't want uh, anyone to perturb in uh, two weak topology like C0 topology because uh, then there are many information that we that are fra becomes fragile and that we, we can uh, lose. Okay, uh, so we want to work with C1 generic set. Of course, uh, if we describe C1 generic set in general, C1 generic set contains only uh, C1 diffeomorphism and no smoother one. But sometimes it's possible through uh, the analysis of C1 generic set at the end to recover uh, sets that are open. And so the, this could be a, a better goal to describe an open and C1 done set of diffeomorphism. Why is it better? Because open set contains smoother system. So uh, let me give an example of, of such a, a result. So on any manifold, the space of diffeomorphism uh, contains two open subsets that are disjoint and whose union is dense. So in some sense, it is a dichotomy for the dynamics. The system in the first open set are very simple. The, the dynamics is concentrated <coughs> on uh, finitely many periodic points that are hyperbolic. It's a hyperbolic system. Uh, we, we call this uh, Morse main. Whereas for the second system, so here we have a very good understanding of the whole dynamics. In the second case, we know uh, just a little. We know that there exists a a periodic point, hyperbolic, whose stable and unstable manifold have a transverse intersection. And uh, since Poincaré and Bivkov, we know that if we continue to draw the stable and unstable manifold, we get in fact, we get, in fact uh, many intersections, and this implies the existence of infinitely many uh, periodic points, in particular it is disjoint from this case. Again, the transverse intersection is an open property. So uh, we get two open sets that are disjoint and the theorem tells that the union is dense. Here we have little information, but uh, we, it's a um, kind of a property we, we are looking for because uh, it, in principle it's easy to detect such a property even uh, numerically and such a property has strong dynamical conse uh, consequences. So before uh, giving more examples, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, more tools that allow to, to give uh, such results uh, by explaining how to decompose the, the, the dynamics in the, in the dynamical space. So there is a, a very general notion uh, introduced by uh, Conley in the 70s. <coughs> which is a notion of uh, chain recurrence. So, as before, uh, we could consider filtration on the manifold. So, it's allowed to remove some part of the dynamics, which is uh, highly non-recurrent. And we keep parts that are decomposed uh, with the level of the filtration. And now we could consider another filtration, which allows to remove more points and to split more than the, the set. Considering all the filtration, the dynamics that remain is called a chain recurrent set and it comes with a natural decomposition into invariant compact set called the chain recurrent classes. There, are, there is another way to define uh, this notion using a generalization of uh, the orbit, the pseudo orbit. Each time you give epsilon, you may consider sequences that fail to be uh, orbits just by uh, distance epsilon. At each iterate, you're allowed to do a small error. Uh, with this uh, flexibility, maybe you can attain a more uh, wider region from a given point. And in particular here, the chain, in the, inside the chain recurrent classes, it's possible to travel everywhere by pseudo-orbit. And in, so we call this uh, chain transitivity, and the chain recurrent classes are maximal sets for this uh, for the inclusion and this property. These notions are quite uh, general, uh, but also, in general we, we don't know how to to deal with them uh, for general diffeomorphism. <laughs> but for some, uh, so namely the generic one, we we obtain uh, a way to compare so the. Uh, the, the pseudo-orbit and the, and the orbit. 
So it was with Christian Brunetti, we obtained a connecting lemma for pseudo orbit. So it tells that if you have uh, so if you have a point which is uh, periodic uh, when you consider pseudo orbit, so for any epsilon it is possible by iteration to come back uh, to the point by epsilon pseudo orbit, then under uh, C1 small perturbation you can uh, make this point periodic. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, this generalized the technique introduced by Pew for his closing lemma and uh, later uh, by Hayashi for his connecting lemma. Uh, you may imagine that Pew uh, closing lemma and Hayashi connecting lemma are similar results where the pseudo orbit has an error just for one iterate. Uh, so during this kind of perturbation, uh, there is, we, we lost. We lose some control on the orbit. We have we cannot uh, keep all the all the points. We have to to select some of uh, some subset of iterate. In general, the orbit we find has smaller period. And here we have erased uh, this part. So in general, we, we don't control the support of the periodic orbit. But uh, so in a, in the second work, uh, I could show that. For the chain recon classes and the generic deformorphism, in fact, the, so the chain recon classes are well uh, approximated by a single periodic orbit with very high period for the Hausdorff topology. So now, for C1 generic deformorphism, we have a well description of the chain recon set and chain recon classes by the periodic orbit. And then we can distinguish uh, two kinds of uh, chain recon classes. So the first one are those which contain a periodic orbit. <coughs> and this gives a, a good structure on the chain recon class because using again the connecting lemma for pseudo orbit, uh, generically this implies that the chain recon class coincides with, with what we call the homoclinic class of the periodic orbit, which is so uh, you take the, all the transverse intersection points between the stable and unstable. Uh, Manifold of the periodic orbit and the closure, and that's it. And just this uh, this uh, information implies that inside the homoclinic class, there are orbits that are dense, and also periodic points are dense. So this is the first consequence. Another consequence of the chain recurrent set, uh, the connecting lemma for pseudo orbit, is that. Uh, if for some reason the class contains periodic point with different stable dimension, it is possible by perturbation to connect their stable and stable manifold, and so to obtain a heterodimensional cycle. Something else you you can do. Uh, so you, if you want to use the fact that periodic points are dense in, in the class, is that so at periodic point you have a splitting into stable and stable spaces. And you may ask if this splitting uh, can be pushed uh, on the whole class. So sometimes it's possible. Uh, so we, on the working class, we obtain a splitting. In this case, in general, the, the first bundle is not uniformly contracted, and the second bundle not uniformly uh, expanded. But anyway, there is some relative uh, behavior. What happens along E is more contracted than along F, or less uh, expanded. And sometimes it's not possible to obtain such a splitting because the decomposition on the on the periodic orbit is uh, the splitting is too weak. But in this case, since it's too weak, it's possible to create a homoclinic tangency. So we have a, so again a kind of, of dichotomy. And here you see uh, that there, there's two uh, configuration I introduced before up here. Heterodimensional cycles and homoclinic tangency. And what about uh, chain recon classes without periodic points? So uh, they exist uh, for some region of the space of diffeomorphism. They exist for a reason that was uh, discovered uh, by Newhouse some time ago, a long time ago. So Newhouse studied homoclinic tangencies for uh, diffeomorphism. So higher in, uh, either in dimension larger or equal to three, 
or on surfaces, but then he, he needed to look to smoother system. <coughs> and he showed that when you have a homotic, some kind of homotic tangency, uh, unfolding the homotic tangency, it's possible to get a domain which after some period is mapped into itself. And this way we obtain a sink, a periodic orbit which is attracting. And repeating this construction, he obtained for a uh, generic diffeomorphism inside an open set, uh, dynamics with infinitely many uh, things, and so infinitely many classes. So sometimes there could be infinitely many classes. And later on, uh, uh, one discovered that uh, this uh, can be renormalized in some sense, so it appeared uh, already in. Uh, I think in Eduardo Codi uh, work and uh, in this setting um, it was discovered by Bonatti and Diaz. So when you have this this uh, disk which is periodic, inside this disk, uh, for some perturbation you can uh, obtain again a periodic orbit with a homotic tangency. And for this homotic tangency you can repeat this construction and so obtain a new periodic disk with larger period. And repeating this construction uh, again and again, you get a nested sequence of periodic disks that are attracting with higher and higher period, and at the limit, the set you, you get is a Chenrecon class with no periodic point. So this is what I wanted to say about uh, the decomposition of the phase space. So now, let's come to uh, Let's start to distinguish between the different kinds of uh, dynamics. So there is uh, so one uh, one result uh, is about uh, a characterization of non-hyperbolic system. There is a, a conjecture proposed by uh, Padis, maybe uh, in the early 80s, which uh, was very important for the subject because it, it uh, motivated a lot of, of all these works. So what he proposed is that uh, there's two obstructions I uh, mentioned for the hyperbolicity is a complete uh, set of obstructions in the sense that any diffeomorphism which cannot be approximated by a hyperbolic one uh, can be approximated by one which uh, exhibits one of these uh, uh, bifurcations, <coughs> bifurcation. So here would be a, a picture of the set uh, of a space of diffeomorphism. This has been uh, proved so uh, on surfaces by Pujals and Sambarino uh, around uh, uh, in 1990s. So what about higher dimensions? So we don't uh, have uh, the complete answer, but almost. Uh, so with Enrique Pujas, we, we prove that if a diffeomorphism is not approximated by one of these uh, homoclinic bifurcation, it is what sometimes we call essentially hyperbolic. So they say that there exists a finite collection of hyperbolic attractor and hyperbolic uh, <coughs> attractor for the past, so hyperbolic repeller, whose basin, so that, say, that I mean uh, the, the set of points which are attracted by the, one of these attractors in the future and comes from one of these repellers uh, in the past, form an open and dense set of points. So on a dense open set of the manifold, which is invariant, uh, we see hyperbolicity. We cannot detect that the diffeomorphism is maybe non hyperbolic. So, I'd like to spend some time to explain you uh, some ideas that uh, allow to, to prove this theorem since it was a quite long story now. So, here is a way we, we will first consider dynamics that are far from uh, homotopic tangency. So, in this region, we will show that uh, the tangent uh, dynamics may be split into uh, invariant bundles. And then one would like that these bundles are contracted and expanded. For that, we need to uh, remove the part where we have heterodimensional cycle. In this case, it's possible to prove a weak form of hyperbolicity. 
called chain and hyperbolicity. And that's not the end. Uh, now we are not able to prove hyperbolicity everywhere, but we have to concentrate on regions that are that attract, uh, on the attractor. For that we will need a perturbation and use the chain hyperbolicity to control what happens during this perturbation. This perturbation, if it's not, the attractor is not hyperbolic, will produce a heterodimensional cycle and contradict the fact that we are far from that cycle. So this is what, what uh, we will do now. So for the moment, we are far from the homoclinic tangencies. And uh, we proved with uh, Martin Sambarino and Dawe Wang beyond that uh, on an open and dense set of diffeomorphism far from this tangency, the tangency, for each uh, chain recurrent class, the tangent bundle split into uh, several invariant bundles in a dominated way. So you recover here a stable bundle, a contracted, an unstable one, like in the hyperbolic case, and you have a center part. And what we know about this, this center part is that it split into one dimensional sub bundles. So what I don't say here is that, in principle, any one of this uh, bundle could be degenerate. So the way to, to prove that, the, the first uh, idea is to use uh, what I said before, that uh, when you have periodic point, far from tangency, uh, you get uh, on the class uh, a splitting uh, whose uh, bundle corresponds to the stable and unstable dimension of the periodic point. And sometimes you have periodic points with different stable dimensions, and so you get uh, more splitting. It's possible to prove a kind of uh, that when you have two periodic points, you can take kind of barycenter, and so the set of stable dimension is an interval over the integers. And so if you just uh, look to all the stable uh, direction, you get a first splitting into one dimensional uh, bundle and you have ex some external bundle but you don't know at this moment that these external bundles are uniformly contracted or expanded. And then uh, is uh, the main difficulty to show that when there is a lack of uh, contraction or of, or of expansion it can be detected on the periodic orbit. So this is the case here and so if this bundle is not uniformly contracted, this is because you have a periodic orbit which, which is weak. Being weak, it's possible to uh, change uh, so one direction which is contracted can be turned into uh, an expanded direction. And so we can decrease its stable uh, dimension by one and, and split more this bundle. Unless it has dimension one. So we get such a splitting, but in principle, uh, I said, if uh, maybe the splitting uh, doesn't see uh, the first bundle or the last one. For instance, you, you may have a class which is a, a sink and you only see this splitting, or a source and you only see this splitting. And so we, we prove later on that unless you have one of these two cases, a sink or a source, the two extremal bundles are non-degenerate. So this kind of splitting where you have uh, two uniform parts and a center one uh, is called partial hyperbolicity. So to prove the uniformity of the extremal bundle, uh, this is a generalization of, uh, so this uses C2 techniques with a distortion uh, technique which comes from a, a work by Manier in the dimension one. Uh, now, uh, we assume that we are far from the, from the heterodimensional cycle. So, uh, here, I, I take, consider a class to simplify, I will assume it is a, a homoclinic class. And being far from heterodimensional cycle tells you that the stable dimension of the periodic orbit in the class uh, is unique. And so there can't be too many center parts in this partial hyperbolicity, maybe two in fact. Uh, here I, I will assume to simplify that you have only a uh, unique direction. So you have a unique center bundle, uh, one dimensional. And we would like to study uh, the dynamics along this direction. So what you first do is to consider the tangent uh, dynamics. 
but sometimes on some subset of the class you don't, won't get uh, information. You may imagine that uh, the dynamics acts like an isometry. And so you don't know what the orbit in this direction are doing, if they are converging or uh, repelled by, by the class. So you need a more topological analysis. Uh, this is provided by uh, a tool that I call center model. So uh, at each point of the set you introduce, you may introduce a curve, so you have a family of curves, and you may uh, lift the dynamics on these curves and uh, see along that curve if, if, if the orbit, uh, what the orbit uh, do. Uh, in fact, so it's possible to get a classification of this kind of dynamics using again uh, the, the ideas of Conley I presented before with pseudo orbit. So it, it's like a fiber, the local version of Conley's theory. So this is uh, for quite general system. But when we are far from cycles, we know that some of the cases of the classification won't appear. For instance, in the parabolic case. Here, I draw here. On one side, we see a topological contraction. On the other side, uh, expansion. It's possible then to prove the existence of periodic orbit, which are some uh, attracting, some repelling in the center part, and to uh, connect them by the stable and stable manifold, and so to create a cycle. But we say we are far away from cycles. So. Uh, in fact, uh, only this case may, uh, may occur. So it means that along this center uh, direction, the orbit, so in this case, uh, chain hyperbolic in the stable case, the, the orbit cannot escape by positive iteration. You would like that they come to the class. This you don't know. By, by pseudo orbit, it's possible to, to, to connect them to, to, to the class. It's a weak form of hyperbolicity, but it, it's useful for uh, to, rec to recover some of the properties satisfied by the uh, hyperbolic system. For instance, uh, we get some form of stability. If we perturb the diffeomorphism, we can define a continuation of each of these points, which will be useful later because we will perturb the, the system. Now we have to distinguish two cases. So again, we have a partial hyperbolicity with a center uh, of dimension one. It could be that the dynamics uh, is supported on a submanifold with lower dimension, tangent to the, the center and the unstable bundles. In this case, so the dynamics doesn't see the stable one, and you can apply what I said before, assuming you are in this case, the first bundle it is a one-dimensional and extremal bundle, so it has to be uniformly contracted in this case. So, uh, EC is uniformly contracted and so the class is hyperbolic, which is what you wanted to, to prove. So we have to assume it's not the case, and uh, not being contained in a submanifold is a, uh, can be characterized so we, we show this with Christian Bonatti. Uh, so let me first say that when we are partially hyperbolic, when, when we are hyperbolic, they are stable and stable manifold. Here, under partial hyperbolicity, at any point there are what we call strong stable and strong unstable manifold. So uh, <coughs> collection of leaves that are tangent to the direction ES and EU. And so if the dynamics see the, the direction yes, if it's not contained in a sum manifold tangent to EC plus EU, then this means that there should exist a strong stable leaf which contains two points. So here we are. Now I told you that, uh, that we cannot uh, uh, prove the full uh, hyperbolicity, we only get essential hyperbolicity, meaning that we will consider uh, the, the attractor, we have to show that the attractor are hyperbolic. So here we have a whole class which is an attractor partially hyperbolic. Again, the center is one dimensional, let's assume it's chain stable. And uh, we got that uh, there exists a strong stable connection. And with the chain hyperbolicity, we understand how we, we have a nice continuation of the two points here, x and y, when we perturb 
the dynamics. So we perturb, and we know that there still exist points, some points x and y that can be followed during the perturbation. So we perturb to move things in the center direction, which is uh, in this uh, here. Uh, it's not so easy to understand how the points x and y move, in fact. This explains that we should restrict to the case of the attractor. But, so this is uh, anyway, in the attractor case, we could show that we break the, the connection, the intersection we had before. So, after perturbation, the strong and stable manifold of y and the strong stable manifold of x are disjoint. But, re remember, we are in a, in a class where periodic points are dense, so we could now consider two periodic points close to x and y, and see what happened when we, during the perturbation, during this arc of perturbation, at some moment, the strong uh, stable manifold of P and the strong unstable manifold of Q have to intersect. And we almost have a heterodimensional cycle now. Remember, to get a heterodimensional cycle, we need two periodic points with different stable dimensions, but here, if we assume EC is not uniformly contracted, there exist periodic points that are weak, so we can choose uh, to put contraction or expansion in the center. But we need also an orbit. So here we have an orbit which goes from Q to P. We need to go back from P to Q, but, uh, but th this other direction is, uh, is easier to obtain from the chain hyperbolicity. You know, the, in the heterodimensional cycle, the difficult part is the part with uh, the manifold with low dimension, the one which is fragile. So this is uh, what we uh, what we obtain, and now uh, I like to say more about um, other result or conjectural uh, result uh, which would allow to decompose the space of uh, diffeomorphism. So remember, the conjecture was that far from hyperbolicity, we have cycle and tangency, but in fact, there are no examples in C1 topology of diffeomorphism which exhibit tangency and no cycle. So we could remove one region. We could also uh, study when there exist infinity many classes and disappear only when there are only tangency, so only in this region. So what we get is a what we would get is uh, a, a decomposition of the space of diffeomorphism by a region with increasing complexity. So this can this summarize several conjectures. Some were uh, they, they were uh, formulated uh, by Christian Bonatti uh, recently. One of them is that. Uh, is a, what I call the finiteness conjecture. So, as I said, far from the mocking tangency, uh, the number of chain recurrent classes should be finite. And we have some uh, partial uh, result in this direction. So, the first one is a consequence of what I said uh, about this generalization of Manier result, so with uh, Pujat and Sambarino. Uh, the number of things should be finite because if you consider an accumulation of sink, uh, it would be a set which is not a sink and so ha has an unstable uh, part, but uh, a sink cannot accumulate something which is unstable. The second uh, result is in dimension 3. Uh, it says that the attractors, including sinks, but also non trivial attractors like the Plikin attractor. Uh, I drew it at the beginning. Uh, there are only finitely many uh, such attractors. Uh, here, what appears is a study of the unstable lamination. So, uh, this was a panorama for the C1 diffeomorphism. Then, there are other settings in dynamics where you can uh, play with uh, C1 topology like uh, vector fields, uh, and so each time you have uh, so new new uh, phenomena appear. I like to, to talk just a little bit about one uh, 
one setting is the, the case of conservative dynamics, more precisely, of volume preserving diffeomorphism. In this case, the, any filtration is uh, trivial. Okay? There can't be, there are no regions which are marked into themselves because of the volume preservation. And so the connecting lemma for pseudo orbit tells that generically uh, the diffeomorphism is transitive. There exists a dense orbit. And the hyperbolicity conjecture, uh, so Paddy's conjecture, is, uh, becomes easier in this case because uh, so you may obtain periodic point with different uh, stable dimension if you're not hyperbolic, but uh, in this case uh, they are uh, linked by pseudo orbit because uh, of the volume preservation, as I said. So uh, by perturbation, it's possible to create more easily a heterodimensional cycle robustly, and so you get. Uh, uh, dichotomy uh, into two uh, disjoint open sets, hyperbolicity versus uh, heterodimensional cycle. So th there is no, no notion of decomposition in the topological uh, sense, but you have the volume, uh, so which is a, a measure, an invariant measure, and you may wonder if you can uh, decompose the volume into invariant uh, subsets which is a notion of the ergodicity. So what about the ergodicity? The so uh, there is a conjecture uh, by uh, Pugh and Schultz which tells that a little of hyperbolicity should uh, give uh, ergodicity. Or precisely in the space of partial hyperbolic <laughs> system, uh, ergodicity should, uh, should occur uh, typically they thought to a smoother system, and there were really a lot of work in this direction for smoother system. In the C1 topology, for smoother topology there are partial answers. For C1 topology it was possible to, to answer uh, this con conjecture, so with uh, Arthur Avila and Amy Wilkinson. We proved that the space, so um, at the end, uh, to, to get the ergodicity we need uh, uh, an argument which goes back to, to Hopf, which requires uh, some smoothness. So we work in, in, into the space of smooth system, C, C2 would be enough, and, but uh, handled with a C1 topology. And so it is said there is a C1 dense and open set of systems which are uh, ergodic, stably ergodic or robustly ergodic. But uh, during the, this work, we, we see that, in fact, uh, we don't uh, use so much the partial hyperbolicity at many places. Only a splitting of the tangent spaces is enough. So uh, we hope that the ergodicity uh, can be pushed uh, beyond the partial hyperbolicity. And so we could hope that we have the following uh, uh, results. So, um, Either we have a little uh, hyperlicity, a dominated splitting, and we would have robust ergodicity, or we have no splitting. In this case, as before, we could obtain homonoclinic tangency, but also periodic points which are elliptic, with, uh, which have no contraction nor expansion. And this is uh, the world where we can get KEM uh, uh, phenomenon, like uh, Albert Fatih. Uh, discussed in the previous talk. So in this case, we can get invariant tori and even one codimensional invariant tori. So uh, one uh, the dense tori will uh, separate the manifold, and so there is no dense orbit. The orbit have to decide to be inside or outside the tori. Uh, so. The dynamics would be robustly non-transitive and so non-ergodic. So again, this would give a, a dichotomy. And here, uh, so here is a picture which summarizes the, what, what we expect to to, to, to be true. Huh? So the KM world and the, the the place where we should be robustly ergodic. Uh, one more word, yes. So, uh, just I'd like to finish with a, a question which is uh, well known, but uh, so I discuss here uh, 
the case of volume preserving diffeomorphism in, in sorry in, in dimension two in fact this part doesn't occur so we, we have a complete uh, dichotomy and now what about flows so which correspond to two dimensional diffeomorphism is are the three dimensional flows one case one uh, setting uh, more particular setting is the case of geodesic flow uh, on a, on a surface so you, you, you consider for each metric on this surface the, <coughs> the geodesic flow and you have two cases the flow may be uh, hyperbolic and give uh, some robust ergodicity or you may be in the KM world and have robust non-transitivity so if what I said before is true also in this setting you would get a dichotomy into these two uh, classes so here I say for the C2 topology because uh, C2 topology for the metric corresponds to C1 topology for the flow so in fact we are not able to, to, to prove that at, at this moment because uh, because what? Because what we allow to do is to perturb the metric. So uh, we need perturbations that are localized in the surface. But the surface is not the space for the dynamics. A local perturbation on the surface gives rise to a, a perturbation in the, sorry, in the phase space, which is a unit tangent bundle. Uh, which contain uh, fibers and so which is not local at all and we are not in particular able to prove that uh, to prove a closing lemma in this case a closing lemma would be in, uh, would imply a positive answer to, to this question okay so this uh, summarizes what I wanted to say uh, so I, I'd like to, to thank the, the organizer for, for the invitation uh, uh, and you for attending the uh, top. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sylvain. Questions? Comments? There being no questions, let me give Sylvain a present from the Korean organizers.